Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah stands and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God, oh, praise Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the
Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I ask that you would speak. Lord, we can hear you. We know that you are here. Lord, I don't know what burden Help us, Lord, to keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you all to stand and let's sing together. In the presence of my enemy, I raise a hallelujah, louder than the unbelief, I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to see in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will Raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery, I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna see in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder.
Good morning. How are you, baby? Hey, buddy. Perfect timing. Today we're going to talk about having a firm um, foundation. A firm foundation is needed for you to build a structure on. It has to be really strong and secure and stable. What is our firm foundation as Christians? Or who is our firm foundation? God. Good job. Um, Jesus told several parables in the Bible. Parables are stories that Jesus tells to teach you a lesson um, or a, a moral. The one that we're going to talk about today is the wise man and the foolish man. What do you think is going to happen if I hit, on, hit around this? Yeah, that was made by the wise man because it has a strong structure. And like Harley just showed us, because we practiced using her pillow to make sure that the house that was built um, on the sand, the weak um, foundation, was going to fall. In um, the International Children's Bible, Matthew 7, 24 through 27 Everyone who hears these things I say and obeys them is like a wise man. The wise man built his house on rock. It rained hard and the water rose. The winds blew and hit that house, but the house did not fall because it was built on rock. But the person who hears the things I teach and does not obey them is like the foolish man. The foolish man built his house on sand. It rained hard, the water rose, and the winds blew and hit that house. And the house fell with a big crash. Your firm foundation is built on prayer, reading your Bible, obeying your parents, and being a good person and making good choices. It is not built on money, things, on the world, on people, because that type of foundation is going to fail, and that's when Satan will come and destroy. Even though we need a firm foundation, it's not always going to be easy to find all the right pieces to make your firm foundation. And there's going to be storms that, that you go through. Just like Carson, I know you're going through a kind of a sad storm right now. It might be um, if you have to move or you... Um, have trouble at school, and it might even sometimes be losing somebody that you love. Um, I will, the more that we learn about Jesus, and the more that we know, the more stable our foundation will be. Close your eyes so we can pray. Dear God, thank you for being our solid foundation. I'm reminded of the song, my hope is built on nothing less, because on Christ the solid rock I will stand, and all the other ground is truly sinking sand. I pray for these children. I especially pray for Summer, Carson, Aubrey, Grayson, and Landon, and the loss of their grandpa. I pray they will find peace and happiness in the memories they have. Lord, please be with us. You know our hearts. And we know you can change our hearts if they are not in the right place. Give us the faith to put our complete trust in you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Okay. We sang this song last week. I invite you all to stand and let's sing the goodness of God again.
Jesus, thank you that you are a God that is with us through the trials. You are a good God that only gives good gifts, Father, and you sit with us in the valleys and you sit with us on the mountains. Thank you so much that we just get to come in your house today and we get to call you Father. Be with us. Draw us closer to you in this message, Father. I ask all these things in your name. Amen. You guys can be seated. Um, I know you've seen different uh, pictures all over town, uh, but we've been asked to pray for a um, uh, missing uh, young man, Jackson Garcia. And so let's just be uh, praying that uh, he, can be, uh, he can be found or whatever's going on. I want to start this message... Oh, uh, a little different. Um, as a church, we're more than an organization or a business. We're a family. And when one part of our family hurts, then we all hurt. Um, that's what it means to be family. Last September, my father passed away. And one of the things that meant the most to me is I looked out, and in the very, very back, because pastors, when they don't have to preach, they love the back, I could look out and see at least eight or nine pastors that had come all this way to Monk's Corner to show their love. And so right now, um, with COVID, things are a lot different. But I would like for us socially distance. And Stuart and Libby, you can stay right where you are. You're perfect. But I want us just to circle the section uh, 
where Eric and Aaron and Summer are. And uh, Whitney and Blaine, if you're looking, you would be right enclosed into all of that as well. And I want you to know that in the midst of all the pain and the grief, you're not alone that you have a family that's with you every step. And I know you good enough that I would not ask you to stand up here because that would just make it really awkward. So I'm going to make all of you guys have a harder time. And so let's just kind of get up and, and just circle. Except for Stuart and Libby, you can stay right where you are. You're perfect. And you can stay right there too. But let's just kind of circle And if it wasn't a COVID, we would all be laying hands, but then we would get you probably sick. But um, And at this point, the streaming, you probably cannot see, but we're in this section of the church. And we want you to know that we love you. And we want you to know that God loves you. And so right now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask uh, Wayne, and I'm gonna ask um, Bart, and I'll close us. Uh, let's pray together. Lord, I, I pray right now for Eric and Whitney and their family and the pain. But Lord, I pray also that they could see. And if it wasn't a holiday weekend, we probably would make the full circle of people that say we love you. And we're with you every step of this journey. So, Lord, I pray that you will comfort as only you can. And, Lord, I pray that you would lift them up and that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to look first to make sure no one uses the exit. That this, It is not over. We still have a little bit of time left. So, all right, okay. Well, can I brag on you guys for just a little bit? Because I wasn't here last Sunday. I was preaching at another church. I was so, so impressed with what you guys did Christmas Eve. Um. Why don't you give yourself a hand? I think. Now, you probably didn't even know I was there, but um, right in the corner, I had three uh, little ones, and I tried to be as unobtrusive as I could until um, Ronnie decided 
that my hand was too close to his mouth and in the middle of, I think it was um, uh, Ronette's time, he decided to bite me. And um, I had to say a quiet amen. And <laughs> only two or three teeth can hurt. But man, I, I, you know what? What blessed me more was the simplicity, but also that there were so many people involved. Uh, and that should tell you as a church, look at in just one practice, look what you could do. Can you imagine what God, what God has in store for, for you? Um, and we're, we're, we're grateful because when, anytime you do any kind of thing, you're going to have some technical difficulty. And Miss Ann was very generous with her microphone, and it went. But it was awesome. Today is the first Sunday of the new year. And if you're like me, Christmas came and went. It was almost as if I blinked and it was over. And it can be a little disappointing or depressing because gone are the decorations. I don't even know. You probably just saved this part of the church just for Christmas because uh, it's just over here. And, and then you've got the poinsettias are gone and the, the candles are gone and and it could be a little sad. But Christmas is more than a day or a season or a month. Many years ago, Larnell Harris penned this song. He braced that old ladder with all of his might and shouted, Dad, have no fear. As I stretched high to store the stockings and trim in the attic for another year. We were busily packing our Christmas away while singing a carol we knew. When I heard my son in innocence inquire, do we store away Jesus too? All year long we must worship day by day. All year long tis the season to obey. May the Christmas tree lights and the sleigh rides at night remind us all to stay in God's presence all year long. It's not just a day. The birth of Jesus transforms 365 days, 24-7 of our lives. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. And because of Christmas week, I didn't get things to Nick, so we're just going to do it old school. There's this written thing called the Bible, uh, or, and you can just read it. And uh, I'll encourage you to, well, he's fast, okay, um, but I'll encourage you to, um, uh, to keep your Bible or uh, the God's Word uh, in front of you. This, 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 pa this passage is perhaps one of the most famous passages in all of the Bible. In fact, when you memorize something, a lot of times you'll memorize this. So let's read it together. Then Jesus said, come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, and I thank you for the opportunity to share that word this morning. And I pray you would speak through me, in spite of me. In Jesus' name.
2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in a stable because there was no room for them in the inn. Fast forward 2,000 plus years, and still in our world today, there seems to be no room for Jesus. No room in their families, neighborhood, school, work, lives. No room. Now we could camp here the remainder of the message, but I want to turn the negative into a positive. And it's to this contrast that I want to camp at this morning. So what is the contrast? What is the positive? It's simply no room there is room. There is room. If you leave here this morning and someone asks you, well, what was the message about? You can at least know there is room. There is room for one who desperately searches. There is room for one without hope and direction today. There is room for one whose lives seem to be in chaos and in shambles. There is room in families that are scattered and, and are estranged and not speaking. There is room for those whose finances have tanked. There is room for those who have riddled with sickness. <coughs> there is room for those even those who have given up on God. There is room. <coughs> on Monday of the, this past week, my daughter Faith, she was here. We were back in the corner together. I told uh, my daughter, you know, if I had to get three babies to church, I probably would be unchurched. Because it was, it was really, really hard. And then it started to rain. And then I forgot that there were steps leading up here. And then we had Good Samaritan Eric who helped us lift the, the, um, the double stroller up. And... But on Monday after Christmas, Faith was going to head back to Cleveland. And I didn't want, it was like a nine hour drive. And I wanted to to give her a, a, a spot somewhere midway so she could rest but in a hotel. But every hotel I called, they would tell me, no room. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. No COVID. Uh, unless you're 21. And I called one after the other after the other. And finally... I called the quality in, and they said, there is room. And it was a great feeling to know there was room. Please hear this. In the heart of God, there is no vacancy sign, no age limitation. There is always room. God's invitation is always on the table. As you hear the statement, there is room, it's really easy for you to begin to think, well, it's really just for unbelievers. And in fact, it is um, uh, for unbelievers because in Revelation, come on, you, know, uh, you know, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man comes unto me, uh, you know, I'll come in. Wow, oh, you are you guys are good. Thank you. Would have been even better if it had been Mountain Dew, but um <laughs> But it's also for believers. Take a look at how the message translates the passage. Matthew 11, uh, 28 through 30. Are you, wor are you tired? Worn out? They got me on those two questions. 
burned out on religion, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. <coughs> I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So what do we need to do first? We need to come to Jesus. Jesus says, come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. I love that. He wasn't just talking about one group, the Jews. He was talking about Jews and Gentiles, male and female, rich and poor. All of you come to me. He's not saying come to a book. He's not saying come to a building. What's he saying? Come to me. It's an invitation. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus called many people to himself. And one of those people's, two people that he called were James and John. And they were disciples of John the Baptist. And when John the Baptist said when Jesus was passing by after he had baptized him... Behold the Lamb of God, James and John begin to follow Jesus. And after a while, Jesus turns around and says, well, what do you want? And they say, where are you staying at? Basically, we want to learn from you. And Jesus says, come and see. We're not invited to come to him. We're not only invited to come to him. But we don't have to get ourselves all cleaned up first. Come to me, all of you what, who are weary and heavy laden. If you're here this morning or you're watching on the stream and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you don't have to clean yourself up in order to come to Jesus. There was a man that I witnessed to over and over again in Texas. And he always said the same thing. When my kids get out of the house, or when I get retired, or when I do this or that, I'm going to come to Jesus. We never know what tomorrow will hold. We need to come today just as we are. If you're a believer, if you're tired and right now, you're more weary and burdened. You don't have to figure it all out before you come. Be like the person that hires a maid. But they don't want the maid to see how dirty the house is. So the person cleans up the entire house before the maid gets here. Jesus says, come as you are. There is nothing that shocks Jesus. Years ago, there was a homeless lady in New York City who attended a preaching service at a Manhattan rescue mission. Afterwards, in the line to receive soup, she mentioned to the preacher that she was now ready to give her life to Jesus. She said, because I never knew until today that my name is in the Bible. And the preacher smiled and said, what's your name? She said, Edith. My name is Edith. And my name is in the Bible. The preacher said, I'm sorry, ma'am. You must be mistaken. The name Edith never appears in the Bible. She said, oh, yes, it does. You read it a few minutes ago. And he opened his Bible and she pointed her dirty finger to Luke 15, 2. The preacher had used the King James Version. And it says, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. 
She said, there it is. Jesus receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Guys, Jesus will use anything to call us to himself, to invite us to come to him. Second, not only are we to come to Jesus, but we need to take his yoke upon us. Take a look at verse 29 and 30 again. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Now we live in a day where yoke is a bit dated. And some of us, unless we've been kind of in a place that has farming equipment maybe on their walls or like a cracker barrel or something, but a yoke was a, a, a beam with metal hooks and a U-shape that would connect animals. And, it, and in order to do that, by yoking them, you would get more force. You would get more performance precision you would get more speed and so but Jesus here is using yoke as a metaphor meaning what is it that you're connected to bound to even imprisoned to a yoke was about control whatever and whomever they were yoked to controlled everything about you in our passage it says take my yoke upon you. It's an imperative. You take my yoke upon you. But there's a problem. The problem is you can only have one yoke. Because two yokes, can you imagine? One yoke here going this direction. One yoke here going this direction. One yoke, you'd never go anywhere and you'd kind of rip yourself. So in order to take the yoke of Jesus that is much lighter than you'll ever, ever bear, can, can imagine, you got to first remove whatever yoke is already there. Some possible yokes, some examples would be religion. Jesus described a yoke of religion like this in Mark 7, 6. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands of God. The person imprisoned with a yoke of religion is sort of like the person that loves to, play, to put jigsaw puzzles together and they put all of the end pieces and then they're done. They never fill the middle. A person with a yoke of religion lives their life with all of the do's and the don'ts and often the man-made things. that no one really tell you why you do what you do. A, a yoke of religion is like this, and when we leave here, it's a good illustration, because when we leave, live, leave here, I told Penny we're either dumb or brave, but Penny already had a season's pass to Disney. So we're taking just Penny and I and the three foster babies to Disney World, which they say is the happiest place on earth, but it really is not the happiest place for me. But, um, but we're going to take them and let them encounter everything because uh, uh, it's off season, I guess. That was one of my Christmas gifts to Penny. I'll go. Um, because... Um, uh, Cleveland was not exactly the most fun experience with three babies. So I made sure I got us a little house that has a crib and a high chair and all this stuff. And but I say all that to say the yoke of religion is like 
spending years saving up to go to Disney. You researched it. Ashley, you said you were a, a Disney um, uh, expert. I knew somebody that was such a Disney expert, they knew how to take a, instead of on a busy day to take a right, then a left, then a right, then a left, to, 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 to ride everything. But a yoke of religion is like doing all the research, saving all the money, flying in an airplane to get to Disney, parking at Disney, taking the goofy tram, getting to the open doors <coughs> where you, where you uh, can uh, buy your ticket before you get on the monorail. And they take a, a family picture. <coughs> And then they get back on the goofy tram, get in their car, go to the airport, and fly home. The yoke of religion is like going to Disney World without ever going inside. They never got to experience anything of it. They just said they went. The yoke of religion is one where you say, I'm a believer. But oftentimes you don't go deep inside to see what grace God has for you. Another yoke would be the sin, a, a particular sin or failure. A yoke that that every time you say, I'm not going to do it again, you keep doing it. Or a person that, even while you're sitting here, if you could think of somebody, and they immediately turn your joy and your smile to a frown. Or maybe there's just something that you can't get past. And that you can't forgive yourself. Another yoke would be fear. I love the acrostic. False evidence appearing real. This yoke captured a lot of people in 2020. Maybe it's your job, your accomplishments, pleasing people. What is your yoke that you would have to lay aside to take the yoke of Jesus? Third, and this is the part that really kind of we miss. Let me teach you. It, it doesn't come natural. Have you ever been there? And, and, and it's like to do things the way the Lord wants us to do amidst the world that we live in is like going against the flow. You ever been in the ocean and you're trying to walk against the undertow? And, and it's hard. It, it, it's like trying to go um, to climb up on a down escalator. It's just hard. It takes a lot of extra effort. And that's where learning is important. That's where Bible study is important. That's why I encourage you. You know, even during COVID, to be a part of a, of a Bible study group so that you can learn God's word and so that you can walk. Let me teach you. Some of us would know what to do if we didn't have heavy burdens boiling us down. So Jesus has to teach us that it's okay. Don't feel like something's wrong if you're wearing my burden that's light and easy. Let me teach you. This past six months, God's given me such a hunger for his word and studying his word, probably more studying his word more than I've ever had in my entire life. 
and, and going really, really deep. I used to always say, well, I'm just ADD and I can't sit still. And, and God's been convicting me that he has so much that he wants to teach me if I'll just stay and listen and learn. If you want to stay with the yoke of Jesus, then look around. You need each other. You have the word of God. You have Bible studies. You have worship. The imperative sentence says, come to me, dot, 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 I'll give you rest. And so I wonder this morning, what's worrying you? What's troubling you? It's January 3rd. If you made any resolutions, you've probably already broken them. I, I said I was going to, you know, try to break Mountain Dew, and that lasted one day. What is it that's burdening you? That's just making your shoulders hunch over. Is it worry and fear? Is it finances? Is it religion? Where you feel like you ought to do this and that. But it's such, it, it just feels wrong. And you wonder where the grace is. In just a little bit, we're going to have a time of invitation. I'll be standing up here. But if there's a burden, if there's a yoke that needs to be replaced today, the Bible didn't say, come to Kevin. He said, come to Jesus. And so whether you are sitting or whether you want to come and, and kneel and just say, Lord, this is probably going to be an ongoing activity because I need to learn, because I take this yoke off and I put the yoke of you and it feels so great. And then something happens and the yoke gets replaced again. And the Lord understands that. That's why we need each other. That's why we need his word. But this morning, if there is a, a yoke other than Jesus, then perhaps today you need to say, Lord, help me. I want your yoke that's light and easy. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the word. And so, Lord, I pray that you would, you would speak to us as you already have. So, Lord, I pray that in the quietness of this moment, We could let go of what is hurting us. What is stealing our joy. And walk in the joy and newness of you. So Lord, I pray in whatever way. Jesus, you lead. In your name, Lord.
Jesus, you don't love me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I'm sorry. And I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. Not just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry. When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. Never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Get out, I just want you. I just want you and nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy moment never want to leave I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Thank you for coming uh, uh, this morning. I want to... Um, do a special invitation for you uh our, when we kick our wednesdays back um on october 13th i'm mean, not october january 13th feels like october but january 13th uh we're gonna have our our wednesdays come back and um but we're also going to start uh our wednesdays with what i what what the deacons and i like to call an open forum and at that time, uh, myself, the other deacons, uh, it's an opportunity to ask questions. It's not a business meeting. It's just, where are we at right now? And where do we see God moving? And then an opportunity to really uh, look a little bit in the past, but to celebrate the future and what God is doing. And, allow you to, uh, to 
to participate. And so that'll be October 13th, uh, uh, January 13th. I know something, you know, mark that day. Uh, so. um, but January the 13th, uh, we will meet on that day because it's an important gathering. We're going to be starting to charge for the Chick-fil-A meals. But on that day, um, the, the open forum day, Chick-fil-A will be free. Please get the word out uh, because it's an opportunity you know, a lot of times people say, I don't know what's going on. This is an opportunity in a relaxed setting while we're sitting around tables eating uh, Jesus' chicken just to uh, talk as a family like we would over a kitchen table. So um, uh, January 13th, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I pray that you would Take what has been shared and the challenges and allow us, Lord, to walk with your yoke and in step with you and in synergy with you. So, Lord, I pray that you would continue to guide us and lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. What if we looked after him till everyone turned to see what we see? What if we drank from the fountain till we overflow? If we bask in his presence Till we came out drenched in the fragrance of oh God What if we wait? What if we stayed so close? Would we see giants fall And walls come down Mountains be moved Lives turned around Rest for the storm would we see his glory would we see our lord if we stayed what if we stayed what if we entered the throne room and stayed on our face till we heard from the king what if we followed him swerving to places Stay.